everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. My name is Monique and this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. And I want to thank you guys so much for your continued love and support here on the channel. For those of you that are wanting to book a private reading, you can find my email down below in the description box where I can send you can send me an email and I will provide you on more information on uh, booking readings or other services with me. So just keep in mind that I will never reach out to you through the YouTube comments to offer you readings, services. If there's somebody that's messaging you saying, please contact this email or WhatsApp me or inbox me, um, just know that it's not me, okay? The only way that you can book readings is by you sending the email um, that is listed in the description box of every single video that I upload. I will also never reach out to you on any type of social media to offer you services, okay? So if someone's doing that, just know that's probably somebody who's impersonating me and you can just block them, report them, or just straight out ignore them, okay? So today's pick a card reading, we have three piles here and we are asking spirit, what is your soul's purpose? Okay, so I'm primarily focusing on what your soul's purpose is, meaning for you. However, if a message does come through with what your, say, your collective soul purpose is, meaning that maybe that's something that you're meant to do as your job or your, as your career or, you know, something that's calling your soul to do something for the collective, um, then I will, you know, but primarily this is the, the lessons, the soul, the soul, your soul's purpose <laughs> that you do have here on earth during this incarnation, what is it that your soul is meant to learn, grow from, evolve from, or something specific for you. And it may even be that you find that some of the things <clears throat> that come through are maybe like what you challenge or what you're challenged by. Um, and you may find that's kind of like where a little bit of your struggle is um, with, with, it, with that in life, okay? So what is your soul's purpose? For this reading, if you do feel drawn to more than one pile, that is perfectly okay for this reading. You may have, you know, multiple things that are going on. Um, so if it resonates for you, take the message. It, if it doesn't really fit, don't try to force it to fit. Just ignore that part of the message. Or you can choose a different pile and see if that one resonates with for you a little bit more. So pile number one, I actually use two crystals on each uh, pile today. So pile number one, you have the Labradorite and you have Pyrite on your pile here. Okay, so Labradorite um, and a Pyrite little crystal here. Okay, so that is going to be for pile one. And then pile number two, you have a blue agate and you also have a little serpentine little serpentine and a blue agate and then pile number three you have an amethyst and you have a pink agate which looks like a very bright kind of like fuchsia color okay so amethyst and the pink agate that is going to be for yours there okay so pile one with the pyrite and the labradorite pile two with the blue agate and the serpentine and then pile three with the pink agate and the amethyst. So pause the video if you need a little bit more time and I will see you guys at your reading. Hi pile one, so those of you that chose these little crystals here, the labradorite and the pyrite crystal, this is going to be your reading today. So we're finding out what is your soul's purpose and we're actually gonna look at your oracle cards first and then we're going to save your tarot for last so those are your tarot cards right all tarot okay so we'll save those and then we're going to spread out your oracle messages so i'm going to take just a second to pull all of these out this is the big one okay so we have the coyote and it says revealer of truth don't take things too seriously. Make time to play. Great wisdom comes from laughing at your own folly. Look out for the traps and tricks of life and learn from them. Okay, so we have a coyote. Coyote. And then we have birds with freedom. 
And let's see, what do we have? We've got these two. We have purity. Purity, okay. So I'm not sure if this is another coyote or if this is a wolf, but you've got two of them here. Um, let's do this one. Okay, so we have chicken. We have dragon's lair. We have rainbow blessings. Blessings are showering in your life. You have the shaman, and then you have nurture. There's a bunch of animals here. Nurture. And then you have card number 38 with growth. Okay. <clears throat> so just kind of going into these first, like I said, we're going to look at and talk about these. And then we will also take a peek at your tarot cards here. But what I'm kind of seeing from this, the first thing that is stand out to me is the coyote, revealer of truth. And so what this is kind of saying to me is that you are someone who is meant to I feel like, I don't know why, I'm just kind of like, I'm thinking like a human lie detector. Like, you are someone who's meant to illuminate something, illuminate illusion, uh, shadows, um, deception. And that may be um, with your own thoughts, or it could even be um, situations that you find yourself in with family members or friends or romantic partners. Um, I'm also getting this energy here. Look, It says, look out for traps and tricks of life and learn from them. Right? So you're kind of uncovering here, in a sense, things that are... I feel like creating an illusion, and that can include, you know, self-limiting beliefs, even allowing other people's beliefs to impact you or to sway your own decision, your own clarity. Revealer of truth. I, I don't know why. For some of you, I'm getting like a, like very Sagittarius energy. Some of you could be that you are a Sagittarius sun or even have Sagittarius is something that is very prominent in your chart. Um, I'm also noticing your little dragon's lair here, and it kind of looks a little scary, but it's, because I'm seeing like these little glowing eyes that are in here. It's like, oh, oh, wow. It's like here too. There's little red glowing eyes there, there. It's all covered in this ice, this snow. It's dark in there. It's like, it's not even lit. It's dark. The dragon's lair. And it makes me feel like maybe you are someone who's illuminating um, darkness or shadow. You know, because even with the darkness that's here inside of this lair, the snow is something that covers in the same way like this purity here. You know? Because with the snow, this is happening during winter season, right? And when the trees and the seasons are starting to change, and I'm noticing here we have the leaves here too, the growth. When the leaves are changing, starting to change color, the whole landscape is something that starts to decompose, right? We have the leaves that start to change color here. And the snow is something that kind of creates this beautiful blanket over the landscape. So it changes it from looking very dark, right, and dreary into something that looks like a blank slate, clean. 
in a sense. So it makes me feel that you are someone, your soul's purpose is like meant to be able to not only illuminate, right, and reveal truth, whether that is you finding your own truth or even being able to see through another's, right? Lies, deception, betrayal, um, and to kind of not fall into situations without clarity. Almost like falling for people's tricks, right? Like this is saying here, look out for traps and tricks of life and learn from them. So you're learning how to be more perceptive with people and who you connect with and who you allow into your life. And so I'm feeling like you are really someone who illuminates shadow. And it may even be your own shadow. It may be that you are learning to clear and even grow from this. With this as well. Because with the birds and freedom, to me, this is you freeing yourself from that energy and the archetype of the shaman here is also some of you can even have some strong Pisces or Pisces in your chart or even Neptunian influence here but the shaman energy is one that people who are natural born shamans or have these placements even in your ancestry um, or have these type of I feel like connections or um, some of you may even be able to kind of look up in your birth chart this information. And the shaman energy is one that is not easy. It is a very much an archetype that goes through a lot of very painful, very challenging, very, very challenging Um you know, hardship and pain and just like a very hard life. And so being able to then heal from that and become someone who is a healer to others, right? Maybe even, like I said, you are maybe you're, uh, with the shaman energy here, it's very mystical. It kind of reminds me a lot of... Um, Neptune, Pisces energy. You don't necessarily have to be that, but I'm. that's just kind of when I think about this energy, it makes me think of Neptune. Um, so some of you may be like mystics, healers, shamans, or just feel like you're naturally inclined to want to help people, to heal people. And maybe you are someone who very naturally illuminates or even triggers people's shadows and... You know, and I feel like a lot of this is you learning how to work with and also master your own shadow here, right? Because with this purity here, to me, this is a lot of clearing, a lot of clearing here with this energy. And then we have, don't take things too seriously, make time to play. Great wisdom comes from laughing at your own folly. And so maybe you are someone who is very, I don't know what I want to say here. Um, what is the word? I don't want to say uptight, but like maybe you're someone who's very hard on yourself or someone who's very hyper, hypercritical. Um, there may even be a little bit of... Uh, for some of you, perfectionism. And there's a need for you to just kind of allow yourself to just like relax and not overanalyze, not overthink. And just kind of allow yourself to learn. So like even if you go through something and... It's something that you feel like you cannot get past. Um, how do I want to say this? Um, I think it's it's just more or less saying that don't be hard on yourself. You know, free yourself maybe from your own negative ways of thinking or own shadow aspects. 
shed light upon them, you know, resonate at your truth. To me, with the chicken energy here too, if you think literally <clears throat> about being a chicken, right? It means we're afraid. We have fear, right? So with this energy, I feel like this is you learning how to find your voice, right? Speaking your truth, finding your truth, letting go of illusions and fears and finding freedom in that. Lots of growth here. To me, this expansion, but some of you, I feel like are naturally gifted healers. And some of you, because of this energy of the shaman here, this is literally going through and feeling so <clears throat> incredibly challenged. Incredibly challenged. And I am looking at this shaman card here. And there's like three skeletons. Three skeletons on this card. And I'm seeing how there's this hand that's kind of like reaching out here. It kind of makes me feel that this may even be something that's within your, your family line. Some of you may even have a native or even indigenous type of um, bloodline here in which there is generation after generation maybe even from your family line, who is like the family member that incarnates as the shaman, as the healer. This kind of reminds me of like, even along the lines for some of you of uh, Hayoka Empath, like um, just triggering uh, other people's shadow, helping people to release maybe their own shadows. But this is, yeah, to me, this is like you being a, a naturally gifted healer, but of course the shaman has to first heal themselves. And for, with the wisdom, like I said, I, I feel like it's not being so hard on yourself, not you know, getting so discouraged or frustrated with you as you're learning, right? Because some, sometimes we can have people in connections, relationships, friendships, and, you know, we go through something with that person where they're, uh, maybe a person is being deceitful or uh, betraying in some way. And we can be really hard on ourselves, like, wow, why didn't I see that? Why didn't I see that person was, you know, being deceptive towards me or, you know, even deceiving yourself in some way. So I'm looking at this here, the nurture card. And she's sitting down on a chair reading a book. There's an owl up here, which to me is that symbol of wisdom and knowledge. And also this crow or this raven, which both of these birds here, even the cat, right? All of her familiars basically surrounding her. This is also telling me because it's a lot of very intuitive energy. Very intuitive. We've even got a little deer back here in the forest. So this is a lot of you really learning knowledge. Maybe this is something that you're meant to teach even to other people, like being the teacher, being the healer, being the, for some of you, like a guide or even a like a spiritual guru. And then we have rainbow blessings here. Blessings are showering your life. So as far as your purpose, right, you've got all of these things that you're, you, whatever illusions these are that you're breaking free from, finding the freedom within yourself, right? Because with the purity here, like I said, this is us releasing old. And if the old means old fears, old beliefs, old, you know, things here, and we're creating kind of like this blank slate. This is starting fresh, starting new, starting over. For some of you, there's generations of maybe this cycle here that you are breaking free from, right? And then in, in a way, kind of creating freedom, not only for yourself, but also for your ancestors. 
you know, maybe illusions that may have kept your ancestors kind of stuck. It's like you are that person in this lifetime who is meant to clear these blockages. And maybe that has even been blockages surrounding abundance and blessings and opportunity. Because you're meant to clear and change, finding growth here. And then I'm noticing that this is card number 38. The three connect back into the Empress, and the eight is the Strength card. So I'm feeling like this is definitely you having like a better handle on your own power, your own energy, maybe even uh, in uh, improving your level of confidence in yourself. Being in control of the ego versus the ego being in control of you. And then with the Empress energy, of course, it's about love and beauty and confidence and um, abundance, prosperity, manifestation, fertility, right? All of that abundant, bling, bringing those blessings in. So maybe for some of you, it is healing, healing yourself, right? Healing yourself. Enough to bring forth the blockages, illuminate the blockages surrounding, maybe even limitations to blessings coming in. But you being in that place where you were open to receive them because you were then working towards nurturing the self and the wisdom and the knowledge. Um, right? Creating this blank slate. Things don't always need to be the way that they've been in the past, especially for those of you where this has been just kind of like a generational cycle of being stuck in some deception or illusion. Mm-hmm. Freedom. Okay, so, and this is also card 19 too. That is 16. That's like the tower energy. Some of you may even be having or have had or will have major tower moments in your life that completely break you down, you know, maybe forcibly making you hit rock bottom. Very dark energy that, like I said, it's looking at all these little like evil glowing eyes in that lair. Like... Some of you may go through some really dark stuff. You know, really, really dark stuff. Really painful. Very, for some of you, maybe even trauma. And, you know, like something that completely almost makes you feel like your, your whole soul is being destroyed in a sense. Like you feel completely crushed and broken and hurt. And it's like, from all of that pain and trauma and turmoil and chaos and destruction that you are in a way mm, transmuting and rebuilding yourself into a much more powerful version of self to be able to have freedom from that and not allow those certain things to be things that block you from growth, expansion, uh, some of you may have spiritual awakenings or go through spiritual awakenings within this lifetime, right? And that enough with it, with an awakening could be enough to just kind of like wake you up to the truth, right? Being woke in a sense and seeing things for what they really are, people for who they really are, situations, ways of thinking. There's so much clarity that comes in, right? Card number 19. You know, could be looked at as a one and a nine with beginnings. And the, the one is uh, the magician, right? Manifestation. Number nine is the hermit. That is very deep introspection. Shadow work, healing, inner child healing, feeling lost, right? So some of you could be, like I said, going through some really, really dark, shadowy, I mean, that may even go into like addictions and codependency and attachment and unhealthy obsessive behavior and finding yourself in toxic relationships, toxic family dynamics, 
and you, I feel like, being the person who is shedding light upon all of that. And I'm definitely feeling like there's a lot of family, generational things that you are clearing here. Card number 19 is the sun. And the sun is about joy and vitality and happiness, abundance, achievements, enlightenment. Enlightenment. Right? That takes place when you are revealing truth here. Illuminating. Right? We don't have to continue in this cycle. We can break free. We can be new and open up maybe any blockages that you may have had or even family line has had with abundance. I feel like you are someone who is fixing that. And I like the way that this hand is kind of coming out towards, you know, because to me that snake is also that symbol of, in a sense, power. And the three skeletons being there to me are kind of like in a way symbolic of generations before you and that you are someone who through this awakening in a sense are being gifted the wisdom and the knowledge of those who came before you your ancestors so this is a lot for you <laughs> by a line this is quite a lot that you have your purpose here of 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 yes but yes, it's like Spirit saying here, don't take things too seriously. Make time to play, right? Have fun, more joy, more happiness within your life here. Because some of you with this, it's like life may have made you feel, I don't want to say bitter, but like sometimes when people go through some a lot of trauma and a lot of, you know, it changes them. It definitely changes them. And so I feel like part of this is learning how to not allow what has been in the past to be something that affects your energy, right? Because let's just say that you have been someone who has gone through a lot of not so great situations with friends, with family members, and you kind of build up a wall and you don't let anyone in anymore and you don't want to let love in. You don't want to be nice anymore. You don't, you know what I'm saying? That like, that wall is up high to the point where it doesn't allow you to feel anymore feelings, emotions, and maybe constantly feeling like someone's going to hurt me. Someone's going to this, someone's going to that, right? And maybe that is part of that letting go of those fears and security. So a lot of nurturing the self, rebuilding. It's like, in a way, kind of having access, right, to the wisdom and knowledge of your ancestors. And I'm feeling like you are also someone who will, or currently working towards improving your connection with your spirit guides, ancestors, whole spirit team. Some of you are very wise, I feel like, spiritually. Uh, maybe even very evolved. Especially if you've already put a lot of this work behind you. Some of you can be kind of like in that process where you're still kind of uncovering truth, right? Peeling back the onion layers of the things that are false. And in that gaining freedom clarity okay so let's look at your tarot now wow okay so wow look at that we've got the hierophant that is definitely a teacher this is spiritual leader spiritual very knowledgeable very knowledgeable wise so maybe when learning this stuff you're meant to then teach it to other people. You know, I look at this kind of like a spiritual elder. You're teaching others. And it's with the Hierophant energy, it's more or less things that are being gained as a spiritual wise counsel. Things that you're that you're you're learning from 
life experience, right? Because the Hierophant is all about values, belief systems, tradition, um, order, and rules, right? That need to be followed. So for some of you, it can even be with the revealing truth here that you are someone who is maybe teaching people, others, how to free themselves from certain beliefs, right? Certain beliefs. That is Taurus energy. Taurus. We've got the King of Wands. And that is very powerful. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have the Ten of Wands, the Devil, the Devil, that is the Shadow, that is the Ego, that is codependency, attachment, unhealthy patterns of behavior, addictions, obsessions, temptations, the Devil is illusion. Um, manipulation, control. Mm hmm. So, and then we have the Ten of Swords. Wow. With the Ten of Swords, remember how I was saying with the Shaman energy, this is something that you go through that is maybe very painful, very challenging, and you have both the Ten of Wands and the Ten of Swords here. Ten of Wands and Ten of Swords. This can be a lot of pain, betrayal, um, things that weigh very heavily on your mind. And with the Ten of Wands energy, if you notice, these fish are trying to ship, uh, the fish are trying to swim upstream against the tide, right? So this to me is like symbolic of you being someone who is going through a lot of very painful, challenging energy within your life. But with the devil energy, this creates an illusion of us being oppressed by whatever these things are, right? And maybe it is beliefs or tradition or things that have been, like I said, generational. This makes us feel trapped. This makes us feel like we're stuck and we're bound and we cannot break ourselves free from whatever this devil energy is symbolic, right? Maybe it's your own shadow. Maybe it's your own ego, right? Keeping you in a place of fear. So if you're revealing truth here, to me that is you illuminating the shadow, the ego. Being able to heal from this. And in a way, the king of wands, you reclaiming your power. Because look at that shaman with that snake there. There's a snake here too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even in this card here, I'm noticing how there's one baby bird that didn't make it. But this other bird that's in the nest, the baby, is like all... Like it was given all of the this source of, you know, food and nurturing from the mom. So maybe even for some of you, it's maybe even going through some things in your past or even in your childhood. This could even be like healing the inner child because this is kind of like a little baby unborn little burn or I'm sorry, not unborn, just born, but didn't make it. And then this big bird here, the bait, it's a, supposed to be a baby. He's got his mouth wide open. You know, look at how f full of everything. <laughs> he's, he's there looking pretty fluffy in his nest. You know, so maybe some of you, I don't know, maybe there's an aban maybe abandonment for some of you. Uh, inner child stuff. I'm getting. But yeah, to me, this, this King of Wands is about you reclaiming your power. Learning to be more confident in yourself. This is also a very beautiful energy of leadership and creativity and having the fire, the passion, the drive. 
to lead others. This is what I'm feeling like you're meant to lead others. Sharing wisdom, knowledge. Some of you healers with the shaman. Illuminating the shadow, right? It's almost like you could even be, if you decided to do this, like let's just say for your your collective purpose, you would be, who knows, you could take it conventional and become a... Uh, what let's see what could you do conventionally um going to school for some type of degree obviously mm, maybe even somebody because with the king of wands energy here this is a very motivating energy you know so maybe you're teaching people in a way to maybe something to do with business because the hierophant uh, is about higher education Maybe you could be somebody who works in some type of form of educating or ed educating others. If you're taking it kind of like the unconventional route, then you literally could be doing spiritual work, right? Especially with the Hierophant. That's also spiritual. Doing spiritual work. But to me, this King of Wands is like you being your own boss. You running your own company. You being the leader. You're meant to stand out in this lifetime. I will say that. You're not meant to... Kind of be in the in someone else's shadow. You're meant to lead the pack in a sense. Right? To me, I look at this and it's kind of like survival of the fittest. With that little baby bird not making it. But all of this is nurturing. And maybe that is something you need. Maybe there are a lot of wounds that you have that go back to, into childhood and this is you in a way reclaiming reclaiming your soul here i mean the hierophant you know like a guide mentor maybe you're somebody who mentors other people if we want to be conventional right unconventional maybe you take it the spiritual route spiritual mentor or somebody who does become or decides to follow some type of shaman, healer, mystic type of lifestyle and, you know, maybe helping people to heal their shadow or even inner child healing, right? Maybe you teach classes on teaching people how to heal their inner child. But this is really beautiful energy. We've got Capricorn here as well. Gemini and Sagittarius. Definitely. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here for you, pile number one. I do hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile two. So those of you that resonate with the blue agate and the serpentine, this is going to be a reading today. So we're finding out what is your soul's purpose, primarily focusing on what your personal soul's purpose is, the whole reason that you've incarnated here. If a collective purpose, say like what you do for a living, what you choose to do for work, is something that does come through, then I will definitely let you guys know. But we're primarily focusing on what your specific, your soul specifically incarnated, what it's meant to learn or to, you know, um, you know, we're just going to see <laughs> whatever comes through. So we're actually going to um, look at your tarot last. We'll put out all the oracle cards first. I think that's all the tarot, right? Okay. So we'll take these out a little bit later. We'll look at the Oracle first. We have Frog with Prosperity and it says, let go of the past and embrace change. Opportunities are close at hand. Hop into this new day with joy. Abundance and good fortune await you. Let's see. Frog and Prosperity, okay. And we have the medicine shield with protection. We have flow. Flow. We have deep freeze with card number 26. We have the gates of triumph. Success expands in your life. 
we have the ocean. It kind of looks like an eyeball. The ocean, okay. The butterfly. Abundance, and you have prosperity here. Success. And then you have infinity. Infinity. Okay. What am I getting from this? Your soul's purpose. Okay. So one thing that I'm seeing here is that, and I am feeling that a lot of this is tied into abundance because the ocean is something, if we think about it in a symbolically, okay, the ocean is very deep and very dark. And there's a lot, right, a lot of creatures that are in there. And so to me, I look at this in a way of potentially being your own feelings, your own emotions, or even the, the depths of your soul, or the subconscious mind. And being that there is this eye that's here right in the middle of the ocean, it makes me feel because you also have the medicine shield here with protection and the butterfly, which is about transformation, protection, transformation with the butterfly, right? Evolving, growing more into an energy of flow because your flow, your prosperity, success expands infinity and abundance. This makes me feel that your purpose is to, I, I feel like, of course, be better protective of your own energy, okay? Your own energy. And I'm seeing how there's an eagle's head here too. So to me, that is also about a higher perspective or higher consciousness type of thinking, in a way, are some of your feelings or emotions, are they something? And this could even be stuff that you have like tucked away in the back of your mind or in your heart that could, in a sense, create blockages. Maybe it's something that's blocking the flow of abundance, of prosperity, of infinite possibility for you. And with the deep freeze here, let's see, that's number two and six. That reduces to an eight, which would be the strength card. And that is about learning how to control the ego and about keeping our own feelings, emotions, and things in balance. So I wonder if, because number two is that's the high priestess. That is to me like the eyeball here. Your intuition is your feelings and your emotions, something that cloud your, your vision. There's maybe a need for you to, hmm, the butterfly, maybe this could be transforming the feelings and emotions, the repressed even, uh, or even transforming in a way, a uh, higher consciousness. This can be like an awakening in a sense of the third eye. Because I'm seeing how this line is sleeping. To me, in a way, if you're transforming the vision, the high priestess energy, this is you being more in tune with your intuition and not allowing the ego feelings, emotions, not being able to control them instead of having them control you that could, in a sense, cloud your judgment or even block you from allowing the flow of abundance into your life. So there's a need for you to be better protective of your own energy here and to be able to shift your into a higher consciousness, higher perspective, transformation. And that can be a lot of maybe transmuting energy. But the number six here is the lover's card. And the lover's is about for you personally, 
would be about you balancing out your feminine and your masculine energies, bringing those energies into union, right? Because if you have all of this flow, prosperity, right? Let go of the past. And I'm feeling that maybe this is what you have tucked away here in your ocean, symbolically. Uh, it says opportunities are close at hand. Hop into this new day with joy. Abundance and good fortune await you. Right? Because you have this beautiful door here that's leading to this new path with this sun that's shining there. But for some of you, are your emotions and your feelings controlling this flow for you? Because this deep freeze is also about taking a rest, taking a break. Maybe it's restoration, transformation, so that you can really open yourself up to abundance. Because number 13 is the death card. That is transformation. That is endings to allow for new beginnings. And you have a new doorway there. So if you're kind of getting stuck with things... Which, like I said, subconscious mind, your own suppressed feelings and emotions, the depth of all of those emotions, maybe even the suppression of things that you're needing to work towards transforming here to open yourself up to prosperity, the flow of abundance, or things just in a way, whatever prosperity means to you, right? Because it's not just pentacles or abundance and, you know, money. What about love? What about, you know, other opportunities in life? But mm, the deep freeze here. Yeah, to me, this says a lot about rest. Resting here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Abundance and good fortune await you. That's kind of what I'm seeing with this. 35. This is what? 35. That also reduces to an 8. That's an 8. That reduces to a 4, which is the Emperor. But we also have the Magician and the Empress. So to me, this is a, maybe even a new beginning of you with your energy in balance. You're transforming both the feminine and the masculine energies here. Right? More in harmony because the six is the lovers. That is harmony. That is balance. That allows you to be in the flow. So yeah, to me, it's changing perspective, higher consciousness, clearing and removing any blockages out of the third eye. And even above the eye, there's another here. To me, that maybe it's symbolic of the crown chakra. Right? Maybe there's some heart chakra healing that you're needing here. Maybe those blockages are something that are blocking you from abundance. And this is what you're meant to learn in this lifetime as your soul's purpose is transformation of you opening yourself up to the infinite flow of abundance, of prosperity in your life. More into the flow, more in alignment, more in harmony, learning how to better protect your energy and not allow your feelings and emotions to derail you. Or another person to affect your energy to the point where you get consumed by your feelings and by your emotions that it completely throws you off balance, right? You learn how to better protect yourself and your energy and not allow anyone to mess with your flow is kind of what I'm getting from this. Okay, so let's look at your tarot. That is so interesting. Okay, so we have the Queen of Swords, which I like it because remember how I was saying that eagle to me is kind of like the, the higher perspective, changed perspective. That's an eyeball, right? Looks like an eyeball to me. <laughs> um, so the Queen of Swords is um, definitely clarity and vision. You know, this could be very... I don't know, maybe for some of you, even opening up the crown chakra and the third eye, your connection, higher consciousness in a way, evolving on a, on a mental level here, changing your, uh, working on transforming your thoughts 
uh, ways of thinking, past ways of thinking that have kept you stuck, your ideas being more clear about actions, decisions, which to me is more masculine energy. Hmm. Knowing when to take decisive action. But this is being clear, right? Being completely clear within your mind and not having the emotions, I feel like, cloud you. You have the Page of Wands, the Nine of Cups, the Three of Cups, and also the Two of Wands. Okay, so what is this here? Two of Wands. Okay. Okay, so what I'm getting, remember how I was saying with the ocean energy, for some of you, there could be uh, cer certain of your feelings, your emotions that kind of keep you a little bit stuck or blocked. And I feel like with this deep freeze here, some of you may have also been kind of like in rest mode for too long, right? Where, you, where you're blocked or you're stuck or you're not sure how to move forward on your path. Uh, new opportunities that are there when they're available. Because you have the Two of Wands energy here and this is about planning. Planning something. And we also have both feminine and masculine energies here. So this is you, to me, your feminine, your masculine energies to work together to help you to make decisions, to take action here because... Your Queen of Swords would be kind of like your helper energy in that this is you staying in a very clear headspace. This is a very knowledgeable, very wise energy. And the Page of Wands would be you not letting fear hold you back as you move towards new directions, new paths, pursuing your passions, your dreams, your desires, your goals that are ultimately leading you towards finding your wish fulfillment, your happiness, and even being able to experience and share that joy among other people because the Three of Cups is also a card of community. Supportive people in your life, friends, family members, this is also allowing ourselves to have fun, joy, excitement, celebration, right? Instead of feeling stuck here in the deep freeze. Also, because this is feminine and masculine, I'm looking at the deep freeze here and it's a lion. Which maybe this is spirit saying that the masculine energy... is asleep is uh what do i say with that uh not like maybe you're too afraid to take action or to make decisions or to take those opportunities that are there like we need the masculine energy to be like switched on you know transformation and three and one is the emperor energy which is masculine right even here the lion or lioness whatever she's called as a female she's at she's at the wands here where he's just like chilling down here <laughs> down here like she's doing the work you know so to me in a way it's like the need for that harmony there like i said with your feminine and your masculine. So this is kind of getting the masculine energy in gear. Maybe this is you because you do have protection here. Maybe this is you learning how to assert more of your masculine energy to set better boundaries, maybe even with friends or with uh, standing your ground, not backing down in the face of challenge or adversity that you might face or even your own fears but that you keep that very disciplined focused energy kind of get in your masculine energy to just flow as as equally in union with your feminine energy here five three and five 
Ага. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm seeing here for you, pal, too, is, is just bringing your purpose is to bring balance to your own energy, right? And not allow them to be affected by or not allow it to be affected by your feelings and your emotions. But you really kind of explore and transform those energies so that you feel more empowered to align yourself and your energy with the flow so that you are able to have and feel abundance and prosperity in your life. Like I said, it's not just about the money, but other things. And I'm noticing that you've got the three raccoons, you've got these three little coins, and then you've also got three little frogs. You know, so there is a strong sense of community and working with others and being open to connecting with other people, making supportive connections, friendships, bonds support um your creativity also right opening up in a sense to everything to your to almost like to your fullest potential pile two your fullest potential by bring, being able to bring your energy into alignment so that you are in the flow okay in the flow and then we have, what is this, uh, Aries energy, Cancer, Pisces, uh, Sagittarius, and Leo. And then we also have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here for you, pile number two. I do hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pal three. So those of you that resonated with the amethyst and the pink agate, this is going to be your reading today. So we're looking at what is your soul's purpose? Um, and as I said in the intro, we're going to be more or less focusing on what your soul's purpose is. If by chance your collective soul purpose is something that comes through, meaning that this is what you're meant and how you're meant to use these gifts or things that you're learning to serve the collective, then I will let you know. But this is primarily focusing on why your soul incarnated. What is it meant to learn? What is the whole purpose of you being here? You know, are you learning how to love? Are you learning how to have, uh, maintain and foster meaningful friendships? Like what is it that you're here to learn? Okay. But the other two pals that I did so far have already had Mm, I think they kind of had, one of them did. I feel like a collective purpose came through. So we're just going to kind of see what it is. Um, but we're going to save your tarot until last. This is all tarot, right? Okay. So we're going to look at your oracle first. We have pronghorn with action. And it says, now is the time to act. Opportunities are here. Move forward with confidence. Your talents will always help you land on the pinnacle. Your quick wit and keen senses will lead you to success. Okay. We have shapeshifter with perspective. Mm. You guys actually got two of these. The other piles only got one. We have opportunity. We also have freedom. And we have the woodpecker. We have clarity. We have the wishing well with card 48. Oh, these are going to fit. I might have to put those over here for now. Because you guys have got an extra card. So I want to make sure this fits. Okay, so we have choosing your path. And it says all is possible. We have the crone with card number 13. And then we also have card number 30 with divine timing. Okay. Okay. So let's make some room here. 
30 with divine timing and then the crown. Okay, so we'll just put our tarot right there for now. What is going on here? Okay, so we have choosing your path. Choosing your path. Opportunity, freedom. I don't know where I want to start with this. I don't know. The way that I'm thinking and <laughs> looking at this woodpecker, I can imagine that if you are someone who kind of delays action, delays action, it makes me feel like with this choosing your path here that you are someone who may doubt yourself or procrastinate or even kind of getting stuck in the comfort zone and I feel like a lot of it may come from a place of fear because we have clarity here <coughs> clarity and even on this wishing well there is this mask that is being lifted in a way and the wishing well is, I feel like, symbolic of the things that you are wanting, the things that you want to create, the things that you want to manifest within your life. And this reduces to a 12, which is the hanged man. So you have, the hanged man is about a change or shift in perspective. And then you have the shapeshifter with perspective. Perspective and clarity. And the number four is the emperor, which is masculine energy. And then you have the eight, number eight, which is the strength card. And the strength card is about us being in control in a sense of our ego and not allowing us or it to control us, but more or less that we have power and control over it. And we feel confident in ourselves. With that emperor energy, it's about you taking action, making decisions, coming up with a strategy, a plan, keeping yourself focused and disciplined. So, I mean, this could even come into you learning how to say master your masculine because we also have the pronghorn with action, which is very masculine energy. And then you have opportunity. Choosing your path, it says all is possible. And divine timing. So to me, it's it's it may be that you are learning as your soul's purpose when to take action and to be confident in yourself because it says now is the time to act. Opportunities are here. Move forward with confidence. Your talents will always help you land on the pinnacle. Your quick wit and keen senses will lead you to success. And the quick wit and the keen senses to me, they all tie into this crone energy. Which is very wise. Knowledgeable. You know, um, just like another pile here, you're, you're kind of, I feel like, connected into a lot of your ancestors' energy. And it could be that you're meant to learn to change and shift your perspective within this lifetime as your soul's purpose. And what I was kind of saying with this woodpecker earlier, I'm going to see what this is. I'm going to look in the, in the book. I don't really know so much about woodpeckers. But I can just imagine, like, if you have a path to choose and you have dreams and desires, but something about your perspective is keeping you blocked from opportunity or to go after opportunity... I can imagine this woodpecker just like knocking on the tree or knocking on your window, kind of like, hello, let's go. It's time to take action here. And you freeing yourself from anything that is kind of restricting you. And it could even be your perspective, right? That is keeping you blocked from taking the action that you need to. Because this number 13 here is the death card, which is transformation. 
and you have the number 10 here, which is the Wheel of Fortune, with the number three, which is the Empress. So that almost kind of, in a sense to me, is kind of like maybe there's some type of cycle. The Empress would be the feminine energy. If there's some type of cycle within you, like maybe if you are someone, let's just say where you have a lot of creative ideas and you're someone who's very intuitive, right? That being something that's on point, but then we need the change or shift in perspective with helping you to be more confident in your masculine energy, to take the action, to not feel fear when choosing which direction you're going into, which path you're choosing, and to feel confident that I know because my feminine intuition is telling me that this is what I meant to do. So a lot of that to me is about trust. Trusting. So I want to see this little woodpecker here, hopefully. And this is the spirit animal wisdom. Let's see. Where is the woodpecker at? Hopefully we can find it. There it is. Okay. Look at that. Seize the opportunity at hand and do not give up. Be persistent in your pursuit of happiness. When you are faced with a project or opportunity that seems overwhelming, let Woodpecker guide you. This animal spirit knows how to pursue what it is they want without giving up. Patience and perseverance will go a long way in helping you to achieve long-term goals. All you need to do is start chipping away at the tasks that are right in front of you. The only way to achieve greatness is by embracing the mundane with enthusiasm and excitement. Find ways to make the path enjoyable as you begin the work. This can apply not only to your career and passion projects, but also to self-improvement. Take a look at yourself and be honest in your reflection. What can you face right now that will help lead you towards the person you hope to be? In order to shape our future, we must first shape ourselves. Okay. So, yeah. I'm feeling that, like I said, maybe it's you learning. Because with the Wheel of Fortune, this can also talk about abundance and prosperity, right? Um, with the Wheel of Fortune energy coming in, improvements, changing, uh, you know, reaching turning points in our life where we need to make change or to move towards and align with our destiny, right? And if you're, you're in a way, your soul kind of like in a way is like tapping away at you. Like, it's time to go. It's time to seize this moment. Take this opportunity. Because that opportunity is going to... May, it may ultimately lead you to abundance or to... Because the Empress is also about fertility, growth, manifestation. So maybe that could be something that gives you maybe financial freedom or freedom from a perspective that has kept you stuck. Right. So your purpose being a need for you to learn how to, I feel like, incorporate both the feminine and the masculine energies and learning how to be more confident. I feel like definitely from the masculine perspective and to feel confident in choosing your path, choosing your direction, knowing when the right time is by trusting if your intuition says, do it now, let's go, let's do this that you can trust where your intuition is leading and guiding you before it makes sense, right? And trust that the universe is supporting you with opportunities here. So it's helping you to have this change or shift in perspective. And with that, it's enlightenment, it's insight, right? And a lot of that coming from this crone energy, which is, in a sense, could be your uh, ancestors, Right? Giving you this knowledge, giving you this wisdom. Opportunities are here. Now is the time to act. Right? Your quick wit and keen senses will lead you to success. So this to me kind of more or less looks like personal soul's purpose that you're meant to learn. However, you could, you know, turn it into something more collective in that maybe you are Someone who, once you master this for yourself, you teach others how to change or shift their perspective, right? Maybe you coach them or you 
mentor people. Um, you teach maybe people how to be more confident or to maybe be more trusting with their intuition. Okay, so let's look at your tarot here. Okay, so we have the Three of Swords. And this Three of Swords has a bunch of chains in it. This makes me feel like you're freeing yourself from suffering. You're freeing yourself from suffering because for some of you, it's like the opportunities are surrounding you. And because of your perspective, you're not seeing that. You're not, you, some of you may be delayed action, procrastination. Um, like I said, maybe thinking of ideas, like I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, but it's like time to seize the moment. It's time to take action here, right? But it's like, to me, this is you, maybe you're, like I said, you're freeing yourself from pain and suffering and, you know, like you don't have to be that. You don't have to uh, uh, sit in this energy, um, okay, what else here? The Empress. The Empress, that is right there. Also that, that reduces to a three. Three of Swords. The Ace of Pentacles, that would be a new start, a new beginning. Prosperity, luck, abundance. Opportunity, the Knight of Cups, is opportunity. You op being open to receive. Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is about us putting effort. It's an energy exchange with the universe, right? So I feel like this is Spirit saying here that during this lifetime, your soul can either choose to stay in a place of suffering and loss maybe even for some of you with finances or other types of pain that you've experienced, but we can either choose to keep ourselves in a place of suffering or we can manifest and create a different reality that we're experiencing. Um, so this is about you putting forth, changing your perspective and working more towards I'm getting some of you are Taurus some of you have some Taurus placements with that I'm just looking at this bull staring at me there could be some stubbornness or some even if you're not Taurus some stubbornness or procrastination or I'm good right here I like the comfort zone and being afraid of change doubting yourself which in a way it's kind of like self-sabotage self-sabotaging behavior and I feel like that here is what you're needing to free yourself from is that the pain the suffering that you keep yourself in because the more that you start to put in the effort to, to work towards changing right your perspective on things and knowing when to take action you change what you are experiencing in your reality you are the co-creator here with the empress the Empress is also a beautiful, vibrant energy of prosperity, love, abundance, beauty, security, confidence, uh, you know, knowing your worth and value, fertility, creativity. It's allowing uh, you allowing that to flow. And as you put forth the effort and the energy with the Six of Pentacles, this is Spirit saying as you keep at it, you will reap the rewards as long as you keep yourself open, right? And know when it's time to take action. And I feel like for many of you, it's long overdue with Spirit saying here, now is the time to act. Opportunities are here, okay? So this may be something that you really have to learn and master within this lifetime is to not allow your fears or insecurities or thoughts and your perspective to block you from 
having a life that is one that you want to live in, that you love and that you are proud of and that you feel confident in and abundant in, you know, something that brings you joy and that you don't have to suffer. You don't have to, you know, always be in an energy of lack that you can change, work on changing your thoughts and your perspective, right? And this is Spirit saying here, all is possible, right? What do you dream of? What do you, you know, you have the wishing well here. What is it that you're, you want in your life? It's possible. It's about you changing your perspective and knowing that I can make this happen. I can manifest this. Right? Manifestation. Aligning your thoughts to that which you are wanting to experience in your life. Okay? But you have to be open to that change, creating those changes that are necessary. And a lot of that could be just kind of cutting out or being more mindful, right, of where the thoughts are at. If they are with suffering, then that's not going to do such do so good for us trying to, you know, manifest here. Right? If we keep ourselves stuck in this place of suffering. Okay? So we do have, what do we have? We have Taurus energy. <laughs> Taurus energy. We also have Capricorn, uh, Libra energy, and what else? Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Okay? So I'm going to leave this here for you. Pile number three. I do hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading.